Good evening, Twitch. How you doing? It's Thursday night, and if you're probably watching me right now, then you are probably stopped watching the Game Awards 2016. And I gotta say, it pretty much kind of carried the same spirit and tone as it did last year. It's just, you know, partially nice. I do like a lot of things that actually the Game Awards did right. Uh, still a lot of things I do heavily criticize and just seems very awkward and out of place, but at the very least though, you know, I'm glad the effort is being made. I do hope they do they find better ways to reward multiple game studios because watching that made me you know makes me just kinda illustrates a lot of problems that exist in the uh, in the game industry, and it's kind of unfortunate when you actually look at it, uh, when you actually really look at it, but for now though, why don't we just jump on in here and get right on into the action of playing some Civilization 6 here, and we can talk about uh, everything goes on the Game Awards, what's been going on, because even all it right now, I actually missed a lot of it actually, which is very unfortunate. But I did see enough about it, a, a good deal of it, though, uh, for a good, you know, well over an hour um, of the of the award show itself. So, okay, why don't we just jump right in? Let's play some Civilization VI. We'll actually resume our game. We were playing as Gorgo, good old, good Greece, as we were. Well, we conquered Japan. We're probably going to conquer China. I don't want them expanding either. printed pages hold great changes within. The world, once so vast and mysterious, has grown smaller and more familiar. Yet, there are always questions to be answered, faith to be tested, and national identities to be formed. That's actually nice. They actually finally updated it, so you're no longer hearing just the ancient world over and over again. So, kind of catch up here. We are going for a cultural victory. I know that sounds a little weird. I don't. I normally don't even do uh, cultural victories, but this game has proven to me that hey, it's actually worth the effort. So, as I was saying earlier, we are spending our time. Uh, you know, we've more or less have explored our entire continent here. We've got a lot of city states here we've discovered, um, but we aren't fully finished expanding on this continent. We want to expand as much as possible, but we also do need. Thankfully, we do actually have the ships now. We need to start investing uh, and start building some ships here. So hopefully, we can actually get to that. But most importantly, though, I think we're going to conquer China. They denounced us. They give us a reason to actually go to war. But for now, though, we're going to recover our army and then slowly move it south. I think, if anything, look, looking at this, they kind of look like they went for, uh, they went for probably a religion. No, they actually doesn't look like they went for, they look for like they went for a religion as well. So, for now, enough about, enough about Civilization VI for a moment here. Why don't we just play this here? Let's talk about what people probably actually want to talk about and probably enjoy mocking and wait for all the, uh, snarky videos to come out. The Game Awards. Did I did I already take care of that square? I did. I already made a mine out of that square. So I saw I saw the game awards. Really, you know, I I'll admit I do enjoy uh you know I, I'm glad they are putting in the effort. Uh, do I Do I have any boats? I have a galley at least. No, well pff. one boat's better than no boats. I'll I'll, I'll take it. Why? Really? I can't get those workers? Oh, they're on a hill. That's why. Well, let's conquer that, at least. So, when I actually, uh, so unfortunately, because I woke up so late, um, I didn't get to, uh, really enjoy watching all of the Game Awards. I woke up at the moment... Uh, where, uh, actually, the first thing I actually saw was, uh, actually probably one of the things I'm actually interested in seeing and develop now. It's, uh, P the PC game Dauntless. And the reason why I'm actually interested in that is primarily because... I'm primarily interested in Dauntless because it actually shows, 
from what looks like, you know, very much monster hunt. You know, not not really. I guess you wouldn't say monster hunting. Um, it has very smooth graphics. Um, I'm interested in from looking at the actual website. I already registered my name and everything, which is good. Um, it does look like they put a lot of work in. Although I will say, the first thing I saw the moment I saw that guy launch himself off with that uh, with the rocket hammer was that Ruby did it. <laughs> Which is something I didn't expect myself to actually say. But hey, transforming weapons always seems to be a very in is always an interesting thing. For God's sake, we've enjoyed the th the transformers for years. And what are those? Those are people turning into cars. Let's see here. We need to build a lot of traders. Actually, you know, what? since Sparta is our main cent of. Our main area of building, so we can actually keep these guys up. I do want to build a settler, and I need a lot. I have a lot of production to build in these cities here. I apparently didn't build a mine there. I'm surprised I didn't. My goal right now is basically create enough settlements where I just conquer the entire uh, the entire region to make sure I can have all the all the natural resources here on this continent. Alrighty, so where am I here? Really don't want these guys to... Can I? Okay, I was worried. I was wondering the first thing. I was like, why can't I get these builders? I apparently could get those builders. Still can't do anything else. I'm not putting those guys in danger. Stalemate. You, I'm not sending my horsemen to die. Right. The stalemate. That's. I'm fighting someone else already. I don't even need to bother with that. But yeah, Dauntless. I actually even took some time and uh, before I started the stream, I actually looked up. Uh, the developer, the developer's Phoenix Games, and they're actually based in Vancouver in British Columbia. So another Can Canadian developer. I swear those Canadians are taking over. I'm, I'm gonna declare war on you already. That, that's a good, uh, that's 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 a good great person to get. Let's see here, Petra. That would be a really good one. Uh, what's this specifically say, though? Uh, on all desert tiles for the city. Must be built on deserts or floodplains without hills. Well, I've got plenty of desert to build, to build this on. That's no problem here. Surrounded with the desert. I love how the, the city that's a desert is the place I'm building all of my stuff from. Alright, well... Oh, I have to... Well, he already denounced me. Oh, I can't invade unless I actually declare war. Right. Alright, fine. Let's see. But yeah, they're... So it's Phoenix Games. that are a developer in, Can uh, developer in Canada. And... I didn't actually take. I didn't see what engine they were using, though. And I gotta say, I do. I always do like seeing like uh, game studios, and, and this is actually one of the problems the game industry actually has, and it's one's current ones, is that uh, the industry has effectively. We're, we're just gonna declare war here because he denounced me. I can declare war. We're declaring war. I know. I promise to try and be more friendly towards nations, but. But I, I want war. I want to wipe these guys off the map here. I, I'm not a person who enjoys sharing my continent. I mean, it's only 100 AD. I mean, you, you, you'd do it too if it was 100 AD. Alright. I know I would. No, we're gonna take Zhang first. We'll take the capital, since they're closer. Do need to watch out though, because 
Thankfully, we can actually use this great person right away. Get us some more money. But I'm always excited seeing new, uh, like new game studios and such appear. Really, they go for my catapult first thing, huh? All right, I'm okay with that. Let's see, Athens, what can you? You know what? We're actually doing all right. You can actually build me another settler. Can you attack? You can. Unfortunately, whatever the capital builds here, I have to take as is. Well, let's see here. How can I do? Major, minor victory. Those are major victories. Those are actually really good. I'll take those. I will take that damage for my units. Oh, it's so good once you actually build up lumber mills. It's also really nice to be able to actually cultivate every square you can in your every single tile. I like that about this game. A scout's gonna declare is going to kill my army. Uh. Part of me still part of me thinks I actually make this too easy. Let's see here. After I get printing, I should focus on ships, which is interesting because culture in this game is where all the uh where all your ships come, uh, stem from. I'm actually gonna send this guy out to... Danger? Oh. Okay. I didn't realize that, but let's actually send this off and let's go on an adventure. I need to get rid of that floodplain. So I have to look to see what other squares I haven't haven't cultivated yet. Let's see, I could probably just tear down that forest. Really, I still can't attack them. That's interesting. I thought I would be able to attack him. Almost got it. So close, and yet so far. Let's see. We'll probably cultivate up there. I'm sorry, China. I need your. I need to conquer this continent. It's the, it's the only way. I have a lot of. Oh no, faith per turn. I have only plus three. Oh. Let's see, Pergamon. Let's actually get that. Let's get that uh, road built. There we go. Unfortunately, I have to keep the city because that is the capital. And we'll actually have you heal. We need to kill you. We can probably get rid of you by... Yeah, we can. Okay. So we can actually have these units heal. And what the heck is... Oh. <laughs> Alright, let's get rid of that scout then. Ah, uh, yeah, they went religion. Why do they always go religion? All of these cities always go religion. Why? It's so bad. I don't need religion. Nobody needs religion in this game. I don't care what people think. Although, actually, I, I am interested now, because you could technically go... Um, wow, that is actually a lot of ships. 
<laughs> oh dear. Uh, well, let's just attack the attack the one with settlers then. Well, I could send him down. Actually, I can. Yeah, actually, two builders. You know, actually, I could just use. I'll just use all those builders then. My one little ship's gonna get destroyed. Actually, I probably shouldn't have, have him fight. I need him to explore. Let's see. Am I hungry? Do I need housing? No, we're fine. And that. I really don't want to build culture there. I know I'm trying to go for culture, but at the same time, I just want to build... Actually, traders would be good. Uh, let's see. Is there any cities where I don't have a road towards? I apparently don't have a road towards Argos. That would be, that would be very helpful. Any of these places need a trade route? Actually, I could just do this. This will be faster. Uh, Reslov. That's going to be a very interesting road, but apparently that also counts as completing a quest. That's very nice. Alright, we're going to just send this ship away. God, look at all these build look at all this stuff that didn't even get built. That's a tragedy. Tragedy, I say. <laughs> and I still have the same problem. All my people are always unhappy. I've never seen anyone I never seen any city ever rebel against me though. I will say that much. What? But well, that's a jerk move. All right. Well, so much for getting that builder then. Can I? There we go. He didn't even have walls. At least all these cities are really, really unperfect. Actually, this city needs a granary. Look at all this stuff it can actually build. Yeah, that culture's done. Goodbye, China. That that's why actually that's why it's always good to actually cut him off as quickly as possible. Uh, two more builds, no more growth. All right, let's go cultivate this. Uh, let's go cultivate our nor the north. Right, just have you skip your turn. Oh, good. I could take those settlers then. Thank you for donating those settlers. Really helpful. Good. 
Goodbye, China. <laughs> Not like this. <laughs> Goodbye. Alright, well, let's see what this city actually has here first. So what do you have? You have a holy site. That means your city is going to get raised. I'm sorry. Goodbye, Longxi. People are no longer needed in this world. Let's see. Now that we have a settler, we can actually expand a little bit more. Fortunately, not a lot of not a lot of resources we could take. This actually might just be the best place we can actually go. Maybe was this plains? Yeah, it was actually just normal grassland. Actually, that actually that probably is actually the best place we can go. I do need this actually. I also want to get trade up. I want to get as many traders completed as possible. But you, though... Do a great lighthouse? What's a great lighthouse give me? Admiral, Admiral points, so... Plus three gold. It's not bad. I better they do something else with them, though. Yeah, let's get as many, let's get all the traders we can. Well, now we just need to kill the barbarians. And we have another settler. We can actually settle up in the north here. Let's see, where can I send him? What's a good spot to actually settle? To expand my culture as much as possible. More desert. It's not bad. Actually, right up here would be good. I know the city is uh, suggesting the spot up there and a little further north, but it's not exactly the best idea. Get all that wheat. And we can send them up there. And then with the horsemen. We can actually get them up there too. And now you can explore. Because now we no longer have a threat. You can explore too. That'll help us. That'll really help us. I need to build as many roads as possible. Something else needs orders. What's going on here? That's one thing. I still wish you could automate the uh, the builders. Automation is still very critical in this game. Like I still don't know why they didn't allow uh, any sort of automation. I could actually probably settle a, a civilization right over there. Well, let's actually just send them over here then. Oh, don't you run, barbarians! Might not be mightier than the sword, but maybe the prince. All right, so I pretty much need ships. That that much is very true right now. Unfortunately, oh, that's right. We needed Kyoto. All right. Well, we might as well just repair the holy site. If we're stuck with the city. We might as well enjoy it. Oh, we don't need these catapults. Yeah, we can just put them by the city for now. Get rid of those barbarians. Is this actually really the only place I can settle? See, that would give me stone. We die. That's a hill. That's also a grassland, but it's also near mountains. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, this is actually probably the best place. Let's 
Let's see. Plenty of housing. Why do they always want me to build Acropolises on hills? Ugh, it eludes me. A Forbidden City, where I could just build that anywhere. 307 turns! Yeah, no, we're not doing that. Eh, for now you can build a monument. Alright, well, for now. Why? Get out of here. Ah, that's not what I wanted. Oh well. Oh. Oh, I'm just giving I'm just giving orders over and over again. Well, I guess we're expanding uh, six. Hey, Law Curry, how are you doing? Uh, you've yet to play Civilization Six. How does it compare to five? Uh, well, compared to Civilization, compared to Civilization Six is more of a board game than Civilization Five, as you can tell. Um, one thing about the game, as you'll notice, I've been doing. Uh, I don't know how long you've been watching, but you now you have to cultivate pretty much every single tile. Um, let's see what else. Like, is there anything specific you'd like to know? Like something like a play style you usually you do, or um, humanity. Or, Humanity like, a certain like uh, style play or victory. I can tell you right now, the, the diplomatic victory is gone. The ocean. So you no longer have any sort of... Let's actually get rid of that. We don't need to worry about so much about military anymore. Is there a certain uh, race, or not your race, civilization you enjoy playing as? You know, anything like that I could actually answer. Uh... I personally actually like Civilization VI a lot better, but that's only because it was only until I watched a you know watched a video on how to actually basically do domination builds in Civilization V that I finally actually understood Civilization V a lot better. And once I took that knowledge into Civilization VI, it the game does a much much better job at explaining everything. Okay, mainly victory conditions, research changes, combat changes, city changes. Okay, that's no problem. I'm more than happy to answer those questions. Uh, but first things first, let's actually let's actually improve building some wonders here. Um, we want to keep that uh, settlers. This is actually perfect. So let's start with the victory conditions here while I'm going through things here. Um, Victory conditions in this game. So, of course, there's the you know high score, which you know go to you know 20 uh, 2050 AD. High score wins, but the other conditions that you that will result in a victory in this game are military, effectively conquering the world, uh, religious, convert uh, the majority of civilizations. Actually, I can show you right now here. Uh, so, world rankings here. This is our victories here. So, science victory. Uh, Science Victory is still uh, colonizing Mars. You do have to do a cut. You do have to do a lot more things actually before that as well. Uh, you need to actually uh, send a drone to you know send a drone to the moon uh, to the moon. You need to have a man land on the moon, and then you need to land a uh, then you need to set up a colony on Mars. So you have to effectively launch five things into space, and you need to actually build a space district uh, for that. Science Victory is the, I would honestly say, is the longest, um, is the longest, uh, victory out of all of them. Uh, then, you, of course, you have your Culture Victory here. Culture Victory is based upon the concept of tourism, and that's something I, I normally don't do. This is actually the first, this is actually my first time actually going for a cultural victory. Uh, so, the important thing of building a cultural victory is I need to build... Uh, let me actually show you real quick here. Let's actually take, uh, I don't think I have anything building here. Uh, I know Sparta has it. What you actually can build is the Acropolis here. And that will actually result in improving, uh, your culture. And you need to actually get great writers and great artists. And that will basically increase the amount of tourism. Now, culture is actually now a resource in the same vein as science. Uh, so if we actually go here, you now have a civics tree, which you actually can learn things faster, very much like science. If you improved your science, 
uh, in your overall civilization, you will be learning uh, your civics a lot faster. So now you actually have things like, okay, I have a privateer is actually in the civics tree. So, and you also have these cards here, which is the government system. I'll get that to that in a moment here. But the important thing is to know here, when you're investing in uh, culture, you are effectively uh, building very much the same vein as science, but instead of course of getting say military units or uh, other things like that, you are actually advancing your culture much, much faster, which will obviously give you advantages because there's different governments in the game here which will give you multiple benefits here so there's the third this is the third tier here what i'm showing you of governments is which is suffrage totalitarianism and class struggle or democracy fascism and communism but to get back to that uh you know the more culture earning per turn the faster you will be learning uh your civics tree so this is that victory domination victory self-explanatory um, yes, uh, uh, Luck Harry, it is a full research tree now. So it is completely dependent on... So like, okay, you remember how in Civilization V you would build a monument and that would effectively just increase the speed of your civilization's borders expanding. It doesn't do that anymore. It just gives you a flat rate of culture, which is honestly a very good baseline. I would still recommend when you have the time to actually build one so you can just consistently keep up you know I've in playing against the AI because that's what most people do in this game they just play you know they bought the game to play against the AI and enjoy playing civilization in a wide variety of ways uh, to actually build that monument there it's it keeps you it keeps that good baseline so it's like okay you're always advancing but even then though you still gain a good amount of culture per turn uh, where well you're just, you know, you're uh, you're always consistently advancing. So yes, it is a full research tree now, and you need to treat it as such. Um, there'll be very much times where it's like, why haven't I learned something yet? And honestly, the after is, is you didn't invest in it. Uh, this game does have a lot more focus towards what you want to achieve. So it's not like you can do it all or switch on a dime. You're really incentivized to focus on the type of victory you want to go for. But you obviously want to be careful because things like the domination victory, military, you don't want to be crushed by other nation states. I almost got destroyed by Japan and China during our last stream. Um, they both declared war on me at the same time. Thankfully, I was able to build a couple archers and defend my cities to, uh, from being conquered, which of course I am apparently leading, which is very nice. Um, and finally, the other thing I don't really do is the religious victory. Uh, that it has, so a religious victory, you need to actually effectively co uh, convert uh, the majority of the world to your religion. And you can do that by spreading your religion. And at the same time, you are effectively, uh, you know, it has its own combat mechanics, very similar to standard military. Uh, but you were, but effectively, the uh, your religious units are declaring war on other religious units. So those are so those are the four victories there. Uh, let's see here. We really don't need you. We can actually just fortify swordsmen. Don't really need them either. Archer. I want to keep my archers. I always like keeping archers in my cities because, well, I don't really have to worry about it as much now, but it'd still be nice. Let's see, I can probably cultivate that. Have you fortify. The more units I basically kind of just fortify here, I don't want to worry uh, too much about... I don't think I need to worry about any other nations declaring war on me for a while. So... If any, let's see here. Let me just complete this turn here, and I'll go and I'll go back to ex explaining things here. So as you notice here, what I'm doing with all my builders, I'm focused more on making sure I'm always, uh, you know, always improving the tiles. Because with uh, every single city now, is I'll actually show this next turn here. Uh, I cannot imagine any condition which would cause a ship to founder. Modern shipbuilding has gone beyond that. Also, Sean Bean is our narrator. He is our wonderful narrator who takes us through this adventure. Hey, Jester, how you doing tonight? Okay, so where haven't I built a road towards? So I can actually build Sparta here and send to Mycenae. I think I'll actually do that. Uh, one huge thing. Uh, that's note. 
Traders, builders only cultivate tiles now. Traders are now the things that build the roads. So you, so the one downside I will say about Civilization VI that I will consistently criticize, uh, because it's unfortunate, is you need traders for everything. You need tr traders are building your uh, traders building your road, and you need to, and you can't automate the builders. That's the one thing that really, really sucks about this game. You just can't automate uh, anything in this game here. Let's actually send, uh, send traders here. So you'll find yourself uh, having to actually build uh, a bunch of traders. And let's see. No, we don't need a, I don't need a great admiral at the moment. So when it comes to like cultivating everything and building roads so you can actually get around on your continent, it's a lot slower now. The game is a lot slower. Doing good, listening to some grammatic. I don't listen to hip hop. <laughs> actually, I really need to increase my musical tastes. Uh, although I'm, I'm honestly tempted more for studying for arcade pit and listening to more retro music, so I can actually recognize music. Well, it's getting ready to hop back on Warframe. I still love that game. I actually do enjoy that game, but the problem is I do not want to... Yeah, I know. Here's the, ir the ironic part. I don't want to socialize with other people and trade and try and make trades for Platinum. I don't want to do that. I If if the, if Warframe's devs gave, us, gave players a way to just give items for Platinum so they can buy more inventory spots, I would probably be a lot more invested in Warframe. I would probably be a lot more invested in Warframe, uh, but they make money hand over fist from uh, making Platinum. So, one other thing I should actually say about, uh, so we can actually talk about cities just for a second here. And this actually is the one thing I really liked. So, in Civ 5, there was an overall happiness meter uh, for your entire civilization. So, if like your entire uh, civilization is really, really unhappy, uh, your production would stop. Now it's cult now it's focused on cities themselves. So you're now really just focused on uh, just doing just focused on cities themselves, which you have to see here. So this is my capital. This is Sparta. Here, uh, it can tell you how many turns it'll take for your city to grow. Another another citizen. So there's 29 citizens actually, or not 29. How many citizens do I have? How many citizens do I have here on this? I actually don't know how many says. Uh, da, da, da. I don't know how many. Huh. Okay. Well, I don't know how many says I have at the moment here. Uh, but this, uh, the city tab here on the left side is actually all you need to know in terms of making sure your city will prosper. So one thing I always do poorly in this game because I advance so so quickly in this game is amenities, and the only way to really get amenities in this game is to build entertainment complexes. Um, I'll get into the districts in a moment. The second factor that affects your city growth is housing. And housing is expanded a couple of ways. Some of the districts here will give you some housing. Uh, we'll increase it uh, increase it a little bit. Uh, the granary, for example, will also give you some plus housing. You have also have some districts uh, like the aqueduct that specialize in uh, giving you additional housing. But your other primary means of getting housing will be things like the farms. Um, which gives you half a house. So two tiles here. So I have two farms here, just in this little area. I know. I know. I turned my mouse off here. Uh, but to the left of Sparta, you'll see a couple of farms, and you know, two of those basically give me one house. So right now I have a total of nine housing. I have five citizens. So that's how many citizens I have. So that's actually all you need to worry about when it comes to maintaining your city's production and making sure they're happy. So right now they're displeased. Not getting as much food. Not my city's not going to grow as quickly. Um, I usually get a gigantic boom, uh, simply because I primarily focus on building a lot of builders here. And since for the moment here, why don't we actually build a museum here in the city here? Because this is actually one of the few cities I actually have in Acropolis. I need to actually change that, and I need to update things. But the downside is I really don't want to give away all this production. Uh, one other great thing about this game is. When you actually go into building, uh, go into your building, it actually will tell you straightforward how much production you're getting and how much food you're getting. Um, so as you hear, there's one little food, three gears. I'm getting one, uh, one food, three production. Looks like I can only build a. Uh, so Acropolis is the theater district for 
Uh, this Greece civilization, that's a specialty here. Let's see here. Trade chat is just as horrible and use an external website for trading. I would not feel comfortable with doing an external uh, website for trading things in, uh, in Warframe. Well, they did add Maru's Bazaar in which you can go set up a shop, which is essentially showing people. I don't want to do that, though. That's, that's, that's me being logged into a game waiting to do trading. You know, I don't want to set up a sh I don't want to set up a shop when I know the items I'm going to be farming are so low tier that no player will ever actually want to buy it. That's honestly the biggest problem I see with Warframe is whenever I played, I would play it and I would finally get some like, oh, hey, you know, they can build this item to this Warframe here, but it's such a low tier Warframe. Nobody actually wants it. Nobody. And that's probably one of the biggest, and that's actually probably one of the biggest issues here. Okay. No, I don't want to use the city here. A lot I actually really want to use this city for. That, like, this is actually the one thing I have problems with with Civilization here. It, Civilization 6 is because now there's the district system, um, you have to be really, really decide what each city, what what you want each city to do. And that is a huge, huge thing, because placing your wonders, placing your districts, you have to be very specific in where you're placing them, because once you cultivate that, that's it. And you're giving up certain things like production or <clears throat> production or other things uh, that can really, really hurt you in terms of what you actually can, uh, well, just get. I don't really want to build a military. Actually, I, could, I need a scout. I can use that city to build a scout. Uh, well, pff, right now you can just fortify. I can build a lumber mill here. That'd actually be nice. Basically, what I uh, what I use just has you list an item and people send a message if they want it. I guess that would work in Warframe. Like I said, I I'm usually very I have I have trust issues when it comes to doing things like that. I I have been very much a victim of like, hey, let's trade something because of my experience of playing MMOs date back to uh, Sierra's The Realm. I don't know if you guys remember that one, but it's that's it's an oldie. It's an oldie for an MMO. I'm used to very much like say, hey, let's set up a trade, set up a deal. Great, wonderful, awesome. Do this, set up the whole trade and such, and take the item. They ins they take the item and they log out. Now I'm basically screwed out of an item. That that's pr that's pretty much my main reasoning of why I actually don't like that. Yeah. Oh, good. I can actually. This will actually be perfect. So. Marshlands, wetlands here, uh, you can't really do much of anything, so to me that's like, hey, this is a perfect place to build like a wonder of the world. You can remove a marshland with a builder. Um, builders are still very much your your bread and butter when it comes to that. Also, as one thing, actually I'll just show you, go back real quick here to Argos. Yeah, I'll tell you one thing, my city's going to be very, very unhappy. Um... Once you build a district, so this city here has a harbor, I actually just chose to build a lighthouse. Um, very much also like the city center here, you're just, you're building on that tile itself. So you're always basically cultivating a very specific uh, spot here. So I actually need... We have a lot of roads here. The one good thing about traders, thankfully, traders don't have to always move. Um... To traders don't have to actually simply move just on the map. You can instantly teleport them from city to city, which is a very, very nice, uh, very nice improvement. So I can actually send, I can send uh, that trader to Olympia, and that would use its turn, just to let you know. Uh, let's actually try this again. Let's actually get that, um, get these guys. I just committed suicide on my unit, so. Warframe, you can't do that up until both parties accept, so have both of the offers up. Although people will try and buy things lower than you want to sell. People try to get me lower my already low prices. Yeah, see, I'm I'm kind of done doing that stuff. I, I would rather just have 
a system being placed where it's just automated for me. But at least it's good there's at least some, you know, some protections. So that's, uh, I'm actually grateful to hear this, uh, that does exist. The natural history of this archipelago is very remarkable. It seems to be a little world within itself. And of course there are natural wonders. I'll be honest, I haven't figured out exactly what the benefit of the natural wonders are. That's something I still, you know, it's like I've come across them, but I've never had to actually build anything. Send this scout to explore, that'll solve all problem. See, something tells me I could actually expand there. I just have to consi I just have to wait a little bit longer here for Athens to actually do that. So for now. Let's see, what are the other things you actually wanted here? Let me check here. So research changes. So research changes, um, Kind of, let's actually just go back for a second here. Like I said, you have two researches now. You have your civics, which is based on culture, and then you have your standard uh, technology tree, which is, of course, uh, based on how much science you have. So, you want to build things really, really quickly. When they first mentioned Mars, but... And you guys... I'm glad, I'm glad to see you guys both play Warframe. That's actually nice. I do enjoy when people actually uh, come across uh, having a similar ho uh, hobby together. Let's see how my people wow these people are actually content it's a miracle i think for now i'll just build another scout and just have these guys go as much as possible this city needs a granary because i am not feeding my people and he's a settler where can i expand my city actually it looks like there's two areas where i can expand that's nice let's actually do that let's actually build southward Thankfully, city-states don't usually do any sort of war. Uh, don't do any sort of war stuff here. So I can actually build a... Send this trader to uh, my city up in the north. What? What? Okay, that was a little weird. <laughs> I meant for them to attack it. Oh, you guys are lucky. I always have to actually make sure my name is always, uh, is always available. Like I said, uh, when the game Dauntless from the Game Awards show, uh, came out, that was the first thing you did. I just jump, I have to jump on getting Tenmar every single time. I, for me, it's always a race. It'll always be a race. I'll never understand why, but, uh, it's always a race. But I really do, I'm honestly, I am actually legitimately interested in seeing more of that game. But it's good to know, you, at least you guys don't have any issues of getting your, uh, getting your names. See, the one thing I really, the one, here's the thing I'm about hesitant when it comes to building districts. When you build a district, it takes over that tile completely. Um, but you can only build so many districts uh per city and the way that's actually breaks down here it can actually go down to the districts buildings wonders and train posts here uh it'll actually tell you so i have one constructed i can actually have up to three here because of the population so i currently have eight citizens so because i have eight citizens i can have uh i can have th up to three districts here but for each one i'll be giving up stuff and one thing you always want to be careful uh which really really does hurt you is you need to make sure you have enough food but the t the tearing part is um you only get so much food uh from the immediate area around you you always need to actually be very very careful in like you'll find stuff like oh i can only build two districts like this district here has a market uh markets and harbors they're both districts and they actually determine how many trade routes you can actually have total. So I only have seven out of nine right now. I should actually build another one. Uh, let's build another trader. Because traders, like I said, traders are what you use to build all of your roads. And you need, you want as many roads as possible here. Wow, we are actually, see, okay, see, this is a perfect situation to illustrate my point here. We are effectively stuck in a, being stag, uh, stagnant right now. 
And that is because there is no longer a place for me to really expand. I, of course, can uh, buy tiles. It'll be three turns until border growth, so I'll actually gain a little bit here, which will be nice. But I'm basically stuck uh, not being able to grow anything. So I, I can build a campus, I can build an encampment, and that'll increase my housing a little bit, but it won't really be that much. Uh, encampment probably will give you, will always usually give you the most amount of housing, uh, compared to all the other districts. Uh, like, I believe it's encampment. Encampment and, and campus will always give you plus housing. Uh, the other ones don't, unfortunately, give you any sort of housing here. Could actually... I want to build a great lighthouse. No, actually, no, let's build a great lighthouse here. This is probably actually one of the, probably one of the best times to actually build it. Because these two cities are nowhere near ready to produce anything. So, let's actually just build, let's build a great lighthouse right here. But yeah, that, that's always been my problem with playing Warframe, though. I could just never get... Um, I could, like I said, it's, it was the advancement of getting additional uh, additional items here. So, like I said, so this is actually the thing about trading here is you can see all the red lines here. Um, you effectively have to uh, send you know send the traders to every single city at least once to get a trading post, and that'll improve how much you're actually going to get from them. Uh, city states have been simplified a lot easier now, so. Every single turn, you'll usually get either one or two envoys, but you can also get more envoys by doing quests. Um, and the quests are very simple, so like this one here, trigger Eureka for banking, uh, trigger an inspiration for theology. Uh, Eureka and uh, an inspiration and Eureka moment are one and the same. Uh, that's related to the tech tree, I'll show that in a second here, and this one here just wants to send me a trade route here. That's be nice, I think I can do that. Uh, no, I cannot, Not from at least not from this trader. Uh, this trader, I just want to build as many roads as possible here, so I'm going to send it to Zhang. And it does say what benefits you actually can get, uh, what benefits your city will get from trading. Uh, so that's another way you can actually get food and production. But primarily, primary use about trading is to get, um... Oh, I already had it built. Apparently I already had both of them built. Okay, I can send one over here then. Primary use of trading is building roads, and roads are always important in this game. Alright, now we can crush you. I knew I forgot something. <laughs> I had a feeling I, f I forgot something. Huh? What the... Okay, that was weird for a second. It was showing the wrong city. Uh, let's see here. Watermill. I always like building watermills. Just always improve. Just always improve your cities. Like this is a perfect city for production. That I will greatly enjoy. Oh, that was another thing. Actually, they, here's my other criticism: is that a lot of the time the game will just jump, uh, jump your uh, game into another area. Um, so you're actually just never, you're never fully, uh, so one moment, like, okay, you're building, your. you want, you, you're trying to select one unit, and you want to make their movement, but it won't. You're effectively stuck, um, making a decision for another unit. So you always gotta be careful, half the time I'll end up making a mistake, and, um, I'll just end up, uh, you know, like I did up there with the barbarians, all like, oh, okay, I tried to make my horseman attack, I'm not able to actually make my horseman attack. Uh, as I said earlier, you get envoy points, so I get two envoys at 150 influence points, and so I'm getting seven influence points uh, per turn right now. Envoys are what you use to negotiate with city-states now, so there's no longer, um, like, military city-states, there's no longer... Trading city states and such. Uh, city states are effectively a either a huge help or a huge loss. So I have two envoys now. I can send to uh, each of the cities here. So I can send one more envoy here. Usually six is always the uh, the benefit here, and it always says here uh, what you're getting. So for one uh, envoy, you get two uh, two culture and capital. At three uh, envoys, 
you'll get two culture with every theater square district. So every city that has a theater square or a theater district, you'll get uh, two more culture. And the last one will give you another two. So like I said, I was going for culture. That's kind of what I was primarily focused on. But they do still have... Uh, each city state still has their own defining thing. So um, City of Candy here, their faith-based uh, city state. Uh, so if I ever send envoys to them, if you're going for a faith victory, that's a city you actually want to uh, benefit from. If you are the uh, suzerain of that city state, and this is where things get a little more complicated, uh, you will, in any civilization, if they have the most amount of envoys, they become the uh, suzerain, and they will get uh, multiple benefits here. So, and they're really, really big uh, benefits here. So, as you can see here, this uh, this city states uh, benefit if I'm the suzerain. Uh, your cities have full housing from water, as if they were all next to a river. So I get, I maximize my housing in this, uh, but also some other ones. Uh, diplomacy bonuses. The city state follows you into war and peace with other players, so other civilizations. It will follow me. If I declare war on another city state, all of their military units will follow me. And they will battle that nation on my behalf. Uh, units, I can enter, of course, their, uh, their area. Uh, I can I can use my builder units to improve their city state. I normally don't do that because you need to do a lot of building in this game. A lot of building. You will always be consistently building builders, almost throughout the entire game. Um, I can pay gold to actually take control of their entire military. And here's the kicker with this: I can pay them. I can take over their entire military, so I, I will have direct control instead of AI control. But if another civilization, if I'm competing against another civilization, and they become the suzerain, it does not matter. I will effectively lose immediate control of that army and all of their units. So that is one, that is actually one huge thing. So I can actually just click on the city here. I can actually declare war on it. Levy military, uh, that's, as I was saying, I can actually levy their military. It would cost me 765 gold to temporary control of all their military units, and it will return to the city-state's control uh, after 30 turns, or if the suzerain changes. So, like I said, it's always important to uh, be very careful if you tr if you want to make that gigantic uh, financial investment here. Uh, I also want money here for my capital. Usually, it never hurts to at least put uh, one envoy in. Uh, to always at least do one envoy to a city. Never hurts to just do the one. Strategy game stealing control haven't yeah, that's yeah, I agree. That's that's one thing that happens with that it happens just way too much. So I'm actually gonna build actually I'm torn here actually. This is, you know what, actually no, what I'm going to do with this settler here, I'm actually going to expand out here. I know it's primarily desert, but is that a marshland? That is a marshland. That actually would be a, a this actually would be better. I want to expand my territory as much as possible. So probably expand it right here. Expand it right here. Yeah, that's all. Oh, okay. Fine. <laughs> If your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a cartographer. I do enjoy that. Having seen a non-market economy, I suddenly understood much better what I liked about a market economy. So every time you do learn a civic, um, let me actually go into the other uh, core part of this game. And this is the government system here, so... Uh, so this is my government here. Let's see. Can I actually change that? I can't change my government. Actually, no, I can. Um, so when you start, you start with a chiefdom, and this is about how many cards you can actually use. Uh, cards effectively dictate how your nation state is going to be ran. Yeah, Sean Bean did a great job for voice acting this game and reading. Like, it's always nice having a good voice. Like, Leonard Nimoy was solid for Civilization IV. Um... So as you advance, your, city, your civilization will adopt new governments. There'll be governments that are more warlike. So the red cards are military. Uh, the orange are trade. Uh, the green are diplomatic, which, effect, which are 
which consistently affect the uh, city states and spying uh, when you get up there. And then there's the wild card. Uh, usually, every single civilization will get a wild card. Um, but pending how you actually evolve your civilization, uh, you'll actually carry legacy bonuses. So if I go to uh, my government here, it's a merchant republic, I, so I get a uh, 15% discount on gold purchases. So when I actually want to buy things, I get a discount. I also get plus two trade routes. But my legacy bonuses, though, because I was previously an oligarchy, my units get 10% uh, more experience and another 1% discount. And apparently I'm also getting... Uh, I'll also get... Uh, a discount off gold purchases as well uh, but to get to the policies here this is your thrust of how your government and how your civilization will develop and is these are very critical uh, so right now I have conscription uh, you know, two military cards right now being used here so I have unit maintenance reduces the amount of cost of my military I have a gigantic military right now that costing me a lot of money uh, cost me 21 right now. It would probably cost me twice, 21 gold per turn. It would cost me twice as much if I got rid of conscription. This, I personally value this as like a top tier, uh, military pos uh, policy. Professional army, I do need to actually sit down and upgrade my army. Uh, so when I actually do that, it will cost me a lot, but this will reduce it to 50%. Um, and as you can see, a lot of different policies. There are policies that will let you produce military units a lot faster, so you're in that moment. You are had you war was declared on you. Uh, you can actually switch your policies. Uh, you can only switch your policies either if you discover a new civics, or you pay them uh, pay to actually switch up your government. And there's no penalty. There's no revolution or anything like that um, for switching. You just pay the money in fl in flat gold, and it's done. Usually you won't really have to do that because the governments always give you enough cards for what you're primarily aiming for. And what res and what tech you're actually researching. Um, economic policies. These are mainly focused on the production. I personally rely heavily on economic policy cards. Because um, the 50% production towards building settlers. It takes me 9 turns right now to build a settler. It would have it would originally take me 18. That is a huge benefit. Um, serfdom. Builders only last so many turns. The default is three. This serfdom card that you can get as you play through the game will give them two extra extra build actions. Uh, which means building a farm, building a mine. Uh, if an area gets pillaged and you have to repair it, or have to tear it down and then build it, uh, that's what serfdom's for. I value that uh, very uh, much as well. You can get a lot more value out of those builders. Um, the other ones I'm not I normally don't usually use. I don't really see a huge benefit in terms of like the district adjacency bonuses. Um, I don't really see much uh, much value from that. Triangular trade actually would be really good um, if you're if you have a lot of trade routes. Like I said, you really have to build this. Like I said, you can actually focus a lot more on economy where you can just buy everything. Uh, and of course, these are also wild cards here. So these are cultures you get. So to get your great people. Um, and each great person has their own use. You have to actually, uh, you don't have to just use these cards here. Uh, that's what the, that's what the specialty districts are for. Um, you can actually get great person points and use their special talents to write a great works. Uh, great art. Engineer will, uh, usually improve your production of your cities. Generals improve the power of your military. So things like that. It's actually not a bad idea. Although I think I'll keep. Do I even have anything to improve? No. Okay. I think I like it as is. I'm not really worried so much right now. Although I will need to start uh, slowly improving things. So if we go to the technology tree here, Eureka moments. As you can see here, mass production. Even though I haven't studied this at all, it's already halfway done. And the reason of that is because I built a lumber mill. And whenever you... Uh, a Eureka moment is always uh, 50%. So it will just cut down the cost in half immediately. Uh, so for this here, it gives me... So mass production lets me build on a harbor, a shipyard, and I also get this wonder here. Uh, the Venetian arsenal. I will be honest, I don't see much of an improvement in terms of... In terms of building uh, wonders yet, but that's just me.
that's just my own personal uh that's just my own personal insight here so the patala palace here one thing i will say though for uh for the wonders here a lot of wonders will give you additional policy slots so like the patala palace here if i built that i would get a diplomatic policy slot here i'm actually working on the forbidden city because that'll give me one wild card policy slot and wild cards are really really great because you can put anything in there military economic or the artists here and another great thing you can actually just simply jump ahead so like say i want steam power but i don't want to deal with figuring out how, what i actually specifically need this will actually go back to as far as it needs to and make go through all the trees until you'll actually get that it's not always efficient it's not always the most efficient um but it can definitely help you uh you know at least have you make you make sure you're not worried about uh advancing in the wrong direction here well if you're going for more economics you can do that so and also i will say civics are often civics and technology will also re un reveal new resources and such um so as you see we're actually very close to uh getting towards the modern age here uh, that sewer would actually not be wouldn't be a bad idea Actually, we'll do that. We'll go, we'll go for the sewer. And, of course, I can choose a new civics here. So, like, right now, if I really, really wanted to, I could just say, you know what, I'm not worried about, um, you know, going ahead. I just want to select my government right away. So, like, if I want to go with democracy, I could just select democracy immediately. If I want to do co communism, I can just select communism immediately. And I think for now, though, I'll just take things one step at a time because I want to look for, uh, I want I want to look for culture, and that's actually one of the things I've always seemed to uh, kind of always screw up. So opera and ballet, that's actually a perfect uh, one here. And because I don't have it learned yet, I'll the game will actually go back and just start learning everything. And I need to go back a lot apparently. So it seems like for cult, well, maybe not culture. Uh, it's actually one of my most productive cities. And I'm a traitor. So if you see a red line here, uh, the ship will it'll just go by boat. And the reason why I usually will always send uh, traders back to the same city over and over again is because they didn't build a road um, in that direction. And that's always important. As you see here, use the builder. The builder is now gone. Oh, I can finally do, uh, I can finally, my ships are now, are now, uh, set up so I can actually, they can actually explore. Uh, let's see, where do I want to put this here? I want to put this city right here would be a perfect pot, would be a good spot. I'm torn between getting up north here and getting, you know, yeah, we'll put it right here. I think we can expand it uh, as far as it needs to. You're so happy you just got your Nikana Prime. Oh, you got that Warframe. Soon I shall discover the other civilizations. And then they shall know who who really is in charge. So uh, let's see here. I can actually build one more trader. Oh no, I can't actually. This last trader is already being built. It was the katana weapon. Hmm. Oh, and he is, oh, and he kind of prime is a weapon. I thought it was a Warframe. Sorry, it's been a very long time since I played uh, played Warframe. For what time I did play, it definitely was. I, I had a very, very good experience playing it. You know what? If I'm going to go, you know, yeah, I'm going to commit to all this culture here. I'm sure I can. Can I? 
There's got to be a better place I can actually upgrade here. Are those hills? It seems like I can only build on hills here. And I don't want to ruin a perfectly good tile. I'm going to see if I can do this. Can I do this? I can. That's exactly what I want. So I can only build, so apparently, at least for the grease, I can only build on, um, I can only build there. Kind of unfortunate. Let's see. This will actually take a while, but I think it'll be perfect. I can actually send this all... Actually, I haven't traded with any of my other city-states here. So city-states, if you actually trade with them... Oh, I can actually do this. I can do, uh, send to non-model. Uh, so that'll actually get me an envoy. And it's usually always good to do, uh, to do quests. <laughs> that, poor, uh, that poor warrior has to wait until I actually uh, build up everything. Well, let's found this city. And we could probably just have you build a monument at the start. Uh, can I? I. Oh, that sucks. The guy won't move. That's very unfortunate, actually. One other thing you'll also learn, uh, really quickly is that. Oh, these hills? There are hills. Uh, don't make me do this. Thankfully, city states don't really get mad uh, at you for anything. But actually, we're gonna set that horseman to explore. We are all apprentices in a craft where no one ever becomes a master. I've lived through some terrible things in my life, some of which actually happened. Yeah, so it looks like actually I do want a campus here. That'll actually also get me uh. Get me culture. So, Lee Bai here, great writer. I actually do want this because that will hopefully, that will actually lead towards uh, culture. Because what you actually want here, if you're, uh, to actually collect is tourism. That's what you want, uh, from every single, uh, of, you know, when you're actually going for the culture victory. So, I can actually take... And, the, and these bonuses here means I'll actually get... Uh, plus two more culture per turn here. But like I said, you had to be very... It's... For me, it, it's always a struggle in what I should be building. For these, uh, for these cities here. So I can get, get all my people happy. Uh, I already have a harbor, because just want to build... Uh, build on ships here, and that actually sucks. Um... I don't want to get rid of either of those, because of the trading posts. Is that even a cultivated square? It is not. I wonder what the mine means. You know what? Actually, let's actually dedicate this. Uh, like I said, my biggest criticism of this game is that I'm always stuck. Uh, I can never decide what I want to actually build, uh, build towards. So, like, I will massively just improve my, uh, my area. Uh, let's see here. Flowers surround me, alone with my drink. I pour for myself, no companion to join me. I raise my glass and toast the full moon. Who shall, with my shadow... Make us three. And of course, uh, so with great works here, this is your gallery. So it's providing a tourism for culture. And I can actually move uh, great works and such, depending on what I have here. Oh, more barbarians. That's not good. I fan myself in this most languid heat. 
the forest invites one to lay all bare. I hang my hood upon a rocky crag, my head exposed, I bathe in fragrant air. So I've actually put uh, both of those there, so that's giving me 16 uh, tourism. But I can also move uh, the Great Works to other cities. Uh, I should just build a monument. And send these guys down south. And I can send these guys up north. The world must be, must be barbarian free. I'm not making the same mistake as I did last time. And apparently I have a settler. And I actually... Uh, I just want to move there. That would actually be the best spot. I'm spending all of my time. See, like right now, all my cities are in producing something. Which is actually really good. Oh, natural history. Nice. So now I have a new builder. I can actually cultivate the rest of these squares here. Oh, I should also mention. Um, specifically with war. Uh, so the top bar here. I mentioned, of course, tourism. That's your culture victory. Um, you get tourism, envoy. Strategic resources. Strategic resources are what you need to actually build the advanced military units. So, uh, when you actually uh, build military units, if you don't have an encampment, you need two of that strategic resource to build something. So, if I want to build horsemen, I need two horses. Or for, as you can see here, I cannot build a swordsman in this city at all. And the reason why, and it says right here in the red text, it's probably very small. Your civilization needs two iron to train this type of unit. If this city has an encampment, you only need one iron. Um, so if I actually wanted to reduce it. So even if you actually want to build, go for military, you need to actually build those. In, you need to build an encampment district. And have that uh, advance in that direction. So you need to be very, very careful in how you, like I said, every single city uh, matters how you construct them. I also will say siege towers in this game are really, really good because it allows you can link up. That was another thing, actually. Um, I know I'm kind of having my uh, my settlers just kind of go it alone, uh, but what you actually can do. Uh, you can actually have your uh, civilians, or you know, any non-military units, link up with a military unit. So I can actually have uh, my builders and such always connected uh, to another, you know, to another one, uh, to a military unit to protect them uh, from being attacked. So what I actually probably should do here? I build another round of builders. I just finished using all of mine. Industrial always just increases production. Um, that's just always, you know, it's, it's just always a consistent positive. You know what? How many can you build? I can build three districts here. This will be worth it. I'm willing to give it for production. I'll just build a, uh, I'll build a uh, production. So instead of just having a million on top of them, you just link them completely? Uh, yes. Oh, well, you do... They do basically sit on top of them. But you link them so that they are protected. So instead of having to, like, oh, I have to move this settler, and then I have to move this military unit. No, they will move as one. And their movement will be determined by the settler or by the worker. Uh, you cannot actually kill traded units in this game, just to let you know. So... Um, traders are effectively immune units. The taxpayer. That's someone who works for the federal government, but doesn't have to take the civil service examination. 
Now I can have an alliance. With nobody, because I don't know anyone that exists in this country. Or in this world. That would still take me way too long. Well, I can actually build this harbor here. Get myself another trader up. And there's another, there's actually another huge benefit towards building encampments. Um, when you build an encampment, um, later on, this is just more of a later on thing. Uh, later on, you will actually be able to uh, build multiple, uh, build army, uh, build, was it, a core and an army. Now, a core and an army, oh, okay, fine, I'm just gonna... Forget it. We just found it right now. Uh, so when you have an encampment uh, in a city, that city will be able to build a, uh, an army or a core. And this is later. This is when you actually have the technology for it. Um, but when you can, it is effectively like stacking three units on top, three military units on top of each other. Now, obviously, you won't get... It's not an additive um, strength. So it's not going to be like... Uh, let's take the military power of a swordsman here. So my swordsman military power is 35 melee strength. It's not 35 plus 35 plus 35. So it's not set, you know, 70 then 105. It will usually be a plus 10, you know, it'll be like a plus 10 bonus. But in this game, even just having 10 more military strength makes a huge difference in when it comes to uh, attacking. For now, let's actually take care of them. And as you can see here, it just jumps straight to my uh, builder. And then it jumps right back to my horseman. Uh, let's actually kill him. And we can actually go on these hills. But, like I said, one thing that really sucks is amenities. Amenities, as you can see here, uh, keeping your people happy. Uh, affects your growth. Uh, so, things that'll get you positive amenities. Luxury resources. Uh, that's one thing you always... Uh, so things like the dyes here, the salt, those are luxury resources. You can trade them to other civilizations. The NPCs will always give you 130 gold uh, per luxury resource. But they also give you amenities. Um, amenities from civics, amenities from entertainment. This is honestly what I've relied on the most for keeping people happy. Amenities from great people. Uh, amenities from religion, national parks, war weariness and bankruptcy, those are the negatives. Um, you do have to watch out for those, but the rest are positives. Um, so, I can actually build a lot um, on here. Unfortunately, I can't really do much on this one here. I think if anything, this will like, be a production town. We've all just built up in the tundra. Let's see, so I can actually build an amphitheater. Why can't... Oh, okay. Let's actually get that culture up as much as possible. So when I can combine military units, like I combine the two swordsmen together. Um, but you always want to be careful because if you do take two existing military units and combine them, uh, you want to make sure uh, you don't combine two veteran units. Uh, what I mean by that is, uh, like the promotion system in this game, if I combine two units that have three promotions each, you're not going to get any benefit from that. But if you do take a newbie, a rookie unit, and combine them with your uh, veteran unit, those veteran bonuses will still exist. They'll still Every carry over. Every should make his son learn some useful trade or profession, so that in these days of changing fortunes, they may have something tangible to fall back upon. So, like I said, the Chichen Itza here. Two culture, two all rainforest tiles in this city, plus one production, two all rainforest tiles for the city. Must be built on a rainforest. Uh, it's a very strict, uh, very, very strict setup here. If anything...
Like Merchant Confederation, that's also another card here. Probably should just kind of keep things as is. here have these guys actually gets uh heal up you always will heal up in uh in cities as well i usually tear down oh yeah one other thing uh with builders since they only have so many turns what you actually can do to speed up production of what your city is if you cut down trees uh you will actually uh get a bonus now this was actually just recently changed where you needed a certain amount of technology and they drastically reduced the bonuses <laughs> الواحد الأحد القوي المنتصر الدائم الذي لا ينتهي ملكه أرسل إليك تحياتي يا صديق العزيز. Hello Saladin, how are you doing? Yeah sure. Yinek yizet iziz heperti sapsen. Yinek Cleopatra hena hena meset ir. Iu ek shawu. And of course, Cleopatra's back. And now I know there's two other civilizations out there in the world. But now I know where their capital is, so there's Cairo, and there is Rakadet. Interesting. That sounded painful. It is the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. Yeah, but every single tile in this game you will you can cultivate. And that's honestly very, very important. It said by people that the house of a tyrant is room. I got instantly denounced? Oh, we have different governments, that's why. Okay, so that's part of the diplomacy. And I am worse than Brutus and Cassius combined. The world will know the truth. Wow. Already, both of them already hate me immediately. That's terrible. I have the urge to conquer them again. This lighthouse was the cynosure of all eyes. I always do. I always do like this, but at the same time, I love the artwork that people did for the uh, like in Civilization Five when you built a wonder. You got an awesome picture. But at the same time, I'm reminded of all the uh, like. One thing was I believe it was Civilization Two. Like, it lets you build your pat, like, your actual throne. And that was always such an amazing thing, uh, to me. Let's see here. Always gotta make sure there's a road where you want. If you do, uh, for trading here, one thing I should illustrate. If you see this trading post, um, right to the left of the name of the city, that means there's, uh, that means if it passes through that city, you'll get even more of a benefit. Uh, it doesn't look like this. Is there any quests or anything? Uh, they just want theology. Okay. Anything. But I would say, though, your best bet, though, is always always just focus on, uh... On building roads, because that'll basically get all of your cities, um... From point A to point B a lot faster. And it doesn't hurt to just waste, a, uh, to use a turn and move, uh, that trade unit. Because traders can't always uh, trade with every single city on the map. They are sometimes just simply limited by range. So, we have that. What I actually should do... Wouldn't hurt. Usually if you're buying mountains, you'll get a lot more, uh, a lot more benefit. Uh, to campuses and such. I think right now, though... But actually, no. Building another settler would actually be a good idea. And the reason why I need to consistently build settlers, I want to try and colonize as much territory on the continent as possible. Um, yeah, so see, I don't... Building the... Building that wonder would do me no good at all. Building this, though actually would. Actually, I wonder. See, that takes 50 turns. 
I just I need to build builders. That's what I need to do, actually. Just need to build an army of builders. You are building a monument immediately. But what I actually need to do, I need to send the builders over here. And I'll just have this builder here. Slowly expand. I think the other thing I need to sit down and do is just make archers for all my cities here. So basically, so this city here, they... That's terrible. Le <sighs> oh, don't you... I don't give you so many luxuries. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, no, that's a terrible yeah. idea. You denounced me. How am I supposed to... Why should I be buddy-buddy with you? You just said I was a terrible, terrible civilization. I always take these things as well, so personally. Yeah, can I just build an amphitheater? Uh, let's fortify... This trader. You know what? Actually, I'll just move this, uh... This unit here. Let's actually move it to Samos there, and I can create a trader out there. Oh, there's more barbarians! I didn't even notice that. Petra Crap. is a brilliant display of man's art history. In turning barren rock into majestic wonder. I gotta be honest, this is actually the first time I've built so many wonders in a game. I don't think I've ever built as many wonders as I have in this game until now. Let's see, I could actually. Ooh! Wow, you actually get a lot. I would get a lot from that. I think would be better, though, if I actually use this. Wow, you actually do get a lot. Huh. Well, at least it, at least that wonder is delivering on what it actually promised. Uh, where's this trader? Okay, great. I can send this trader to uh, Kyoto. Did I discover in like an ancient? I did discover a, a, a tribal village in the year 760 AD. What? What happened? This unit earned experience. Nice. Well, now I'm curious. What happened? Something happened to my units. Let's see. Back to exploring. I'll fortify you. Yes, there are still tribal villages. They can give you uh they can give you gold, they can give you experience, uh they can give you faith, or they can actually have uh technology, but it would only trigger that Eureka moment, so you would only get fifty percent. Uh, as one other thing you probably just saw there, just in a quick second. Uh, sometimes barbarians just spawn. Out of nowhere. Kinda sucks. Still haven't figured out why exactly, but they do. Uh, let's see here. Er, yeah, let's actually... What's this power here? Increases trade route. Uh, grants one free copy luxury resource on this tile for your capital city. I mean, in the real world, there are a few. Yeah. No, you are definitely you are definitely right about that. So this actually gives me able to let me copy a luxury resource. 
Uh, like I said, luxury resources are usually great to uh, trade with other uh, other cities for bonus resources. I. Uh, You know what, let's actually get salt. That's one thing I've actually, I actually don't have a lot of in terms of amenities. Let's see. Let's see. Wow, this would actually get me for science. That's actually a lot. I wouldn't mind taking that. I'll take it. Have this be the only school in my civilization. So the one thing that's very deceptive, like I said, I've selected my, my builder here. It doesn't really show me anything I can build. Um, so you always have to be very, you always have to actually look, um, like really look at every single tile, because every tile can be cultivated and turned into something aside from desert. And I mean every single tile. And each tile will obviously tell you like what city they belong to. A diplomat is a man who always remembers a woman's birthday, but never remembers her age. So... This is actually a pretty good one here. I actually don't need that one anymore. I'll actually take this. Because if I can build spies now, that changes everything. It does. I can build spies. Let's see. What do you have? You have... You have an archaeological museum, so let's actually get to have him build a an art museum. Major defeat. Oh no, that's not good. I'm moving all these pikemen. Like I said, the reason I'm able to now move so quickly all across the map is because of all those roads. But it's not going to be anywhere near like Civilization V, where your entire continent is covered in roads. Я царь Петр. Достойный правитель, подобный вам, должен ценить все самое изысканное. Любите ли вы искусство подобно мне? And looks like our last player is Russia. On to meet you. I'd love to have. I'd love to sample your hospitality. Make a copy of that. Of that salt. That's building, that's building. Alright, let's send him over here then. Like I said, I think this is honestly my my, my favorite civilization now. Uh, simply because the game has a lot more uh, a lot more interactivity. But at the same time, it still does require a it should it needs a lot more automation. Like, the combat's fine, the combat's still good. Let's see, uh, I'd rather just move him up here and have him heal for, him for a turn. Let's see, what is wrong with this city here? It's not advancing at all. So if you're, if you can obviously destroy and pillage, uh, districts as well, just like anything else. Uh, but it's very important. Let's actually do this. Move this guy up here. It's Actually, we need to get the production of these cities up. Production is still very, very important in this game. What is going on? Oh, barbarians! That explains everything. So, it's always nice to just be able to get bo uh, bonus resources. Really? Really? Because one other thing, you never know where, um... The other downside is you never really know where... Uh, right here should actually be good. 
see. That's what I was going to say here. So we can actually build a spy here now. We will actually start spying on all these... On all the cities. Let's see. Artifact slots, great works of art slots. Let's, let's do more. Let's get more of those. This is not this is not a good city to actually build things. If anything, this is actually probably be a good military city. At least I would think it would be a good military city. Okay. All right. Oh, so all deserts. Right. Huh. Well, this will be one of the few times I'll actually build onto this then. Do I really do I really need a military? I don't think I do. Oh, a campus. Do you get anything bonus from campuses? Like so, this is this is my personal weakness when playing this game. I'm very indec I'm very indecisive in what I should be building. Uh, what's going on here? I can actually upgrade this to a caraval. Let's actually do that. So this, as you can see here, I can actually remove this rainforest, which is what I'm going to do, and that'll, it'll, it's currently taking 43 turns for this city here to actually build that harbor. Take it down, goes down to 34. Massive improvement. Too close. Oh, travel village. And I'm granted a trader unit. Nice. So I can actually. And there's my trader unit. Where's that other city? I can actually move this right over there to Rhodes. Exactly what we need. They don't want to be contacted. Yeah, so civilizations hate me so much. Where's Russia? There's Russia. I'm actually fortunate. The last time I actually played a continent game, I actually got... I got... Re I got screwed. I did not get to move at all. See, right now, this, this place is... If you're maxed out on housing, your population growth rate slows dramatically. And honestly, I'd say... It's okay... For that to happen. Because, like I said, the problem I have is basically I'm always, I always create this stagnation. Like the game, like the obvious solution is, of course, is like okay, just build another, uh, build an entertainment complex and entertain everyone. But I shouldn't have to build. It feels like I have to build an entertainment complex on every single, uh, every single city. Let's actually build that. No, I don't need that. I don't need that right now. What I need is this place needs a builder. Actually, no, it doesn't need a builder. It does need just build a harbor. Yeah, let's stick there then. But just to let you know what I'm currently, what speed I'm currently playing this. I'm playing this at the, uh, at the, uh, def at the default speed. So the game does go, like I said, the, the game goes a little, a lot slower than, uh, normal. I could have sworn there was a barbarian camp up here. Could have sworn there was a barbarian camp up here. Alright, great. So I actually have roads here. So I can actually have this go to Megara. And have these two cities connected.
Eyu mei i em rimat shawutiyu em paiter. Entek yiswa en yimiyu yem. Are you coming on to me, Cleopatra? But you did not- hang on a second. Okay, so... I don't understand the diplomatic part yet, because everyone has hin hidden agendas and such. Um, like civilization with powerful military, so I'll try to ally with them to avoid damaging military conflicts. Dislike civilization, so that end, of course, has a, uh... And, of course, has a hidden agenda. Every single one has a hidden agenda. Uh, you can also see... Uh, depending on how intelligent your, uh, your civilization is, like, relationships, she really hates Russia. And apparently he's been denounced by Russia. So, access level is limited. Uh, our relationship, Anna tells you. So, she likes me just simply because... She's now starting to like me. Uh, because I have a strong military. But, uh, I have a very... I have different governments, which is apparently a huge, huge uh, cause here. But, of course, because I got denounced, you can always go to war. You can only go to war uh, formally... If you've been denounced, you can always declare a surprise war, but that will make people think you're a warmonger and make other civilizations more likely to declare Your war on you. Your opinions are always suspected and usually opposed. But what I actually can do... If I have liberalism, I can actually get plus one amenities from having two specialty districts, but I would have to actually build specialty districts everywhere. Isn't a bad thing, honestly. You know what? We do need to do this. And we even got some more envoys. We have a lot of a lot more envoys. A lot of culture envoys, too. What do they want? They want to destroy barbarian outposts. So there's a science one now, so we can actually get a science. And if you do miss uh, an opportunity for a quest, like if I research theology and not get the trigger, uh, it'll just give you another quest. So city-states are always just giving you, uh, you know, giving you, uh, more quests and such. What I can do is... probably focus on being, uh, let's get three and three here. I think I just became the suzerain of those civilization- of those city-states. Oh, I should have built the harbor. That was my mistake. See, like, all these trees, all this rainforest, to me, I don't... I really don't like using rainforest. I like... I prefer cutting down rainforest, because that'll just always give you production value. Astronomy's much more fun when you're not an astronomer. <laughs> And the city center, that's actually where your city is located. So if I built ancient walls or built a granary, um, I would actually get... Uh, it would just build there. It doesn't actually take up a, an additional slot here. Oh, that's right. That was the reason why I never built on the, uh, the Colossus there. You know what, actually, that's not a bad idea. Since I took that... Always a terrible. I always hate making these decisions. And I think the reason why I'm no longer having conflict, like I said, this this has been a lot more relaxing uh, than normal, simply because I don't have to. I've already taken out the threats since Japan and China both declared war on me. And I'll say this: Prince difficulty, you'll usually get a decent challenge out of it. This is actually Prince difficulty. Um, but once you actually learn how to really play the game, you know, handling Prince is no problem, but anything higher, 
the game does its usual. It just starts cheating like crazy. You know, it'll build its military faster. It will. The barbarians will absolutely destroy you, which is actually pretty scary. How many builds do you have? You have two builds left. Yeah, I guess sending. Yeah, sending it south would actually be a good idea. But yeah, I always just have a problem with uh, entertainment in this game. I really should just try and commit to, like, science and... Uh, science and wonder. Well, that's something game developers just aren't doing in this day and age. They're just not focused on... Um, ooh, excuse me. Uh, they are nowhere close to improving AI in games right now, which is, to me, really unfortunate. Build a harbor. And you can also build a harbor here. Actually, no, you're only going to have one. Harbors will always give you trade routes, but it also lets you, uh... It won't let you build military, naval military units a lot faster, but it will let you, um... It'll remove the embarking and disembarking, uh, movement penalty. Actually, you know, maybe a harbor actually is not a bad idea. There's nothing else really you can do in that, in that city for sea, uh, for sea tiles. Like, because I got, I, I'm very much addicted to just using builders and just cult, have the builders cultivate anything and everything. So, like, my entire civilization is miserable. But to actually solve that, I need to build um, entertainment complexes in each city. And that's something that's not really well designed, in my opinion. Let's see. Oh, great, I can actually upgrade this. And let's actually hit that heal. And let's actually stop the barbarians from crushing my city. Yeah, barbarians will still spawn. Um... Over and over again. Throughout the ages, no matter what. I don't need this rainforest. This, that, just to let you know, every single tile, you if it's in your territory, you will still get, uh... You will still get something. And of course, it does have value, like defense bonuses and such. Um... But just sometimes... Um... If you don't need it, just get rid of it. So, like, I'm probably going to get a huge bonus. Yeah, I'm going to get 50 food and 50 production from this. You know, th think of chopping down the trees as burst. Uh, burst research. Like, I would get 99 production from this if I tore it down. But, is this a hill? No, it's just it's just grassland. So, if I, if I... The only way I would even get any sort of production from this if I actually built a lumber mill. I really do uh, enjoy lumber mills. It would actually not be a good idea for me to tear that down because I'm only building a builder. I would also recommend if you are uh, building, uh, if you if you are going to chop down a rainforest or uh, or trees, like to the apples on the Dead Sea shore, all ashes to the taste. You should actually. Um, you should actually make sure you're producing something like a uh, like a district or a building, something around those lines. You know, unless you absolutely need that unit produced immediately. Like, say you're making a military unit, yeah, definitely chop down that tree, chop down that rainforest. There is later in the game you do actually get the option to plant trees with your builders. So that is an option, but I can't remember which civics 
it is actually under. I'm actually going to chop down that rainforest there because I don't need it. And since I actually don't need this rainforest either. Because rainforests do give you a little bit of production. Uh, but to me personally, it's not enough to warrant it. I can actually send these guys over here. I can actually build a campus here. That's actually not a bad idea. Man, it's a, it's a good thing I have my own continent. Or else I would be in trouble. Oh. Stalemate, huh? Uh, let's see here. Oh, come on, guys. As long as I can get w one of these areas here, I'll be happy. The industrial era. Ballet projects a fragile kind of strength and a certain inflexible precision. There we go. That's actually worth it. So let's see here. There is a point where you do get so many cards; it's kind of difficult to actually tell what you what you actually need. So now, so now I have the option of getting four great musician points per turn. That's actually not bad. We're actually not really building as many. Se oh no, that's a wild card slot. Shoot. Uh, so what I can do here, I'll actually get rid of that. Uh, let's not worry about producing as many settlers. Out into the slot. Musicians. There we go. But as you see, it's always important to just simply look at, uh, like, what you're actually getting from each of the cards here. Like, a neighborhood here, uh, is actually a really good one that usually solves a lot of your, uh, a lot of your problems. Like, here's a natural history museum here. I can actually learn colonialism. That'll actually be a really good one. Opera and ballet seems to be, is a standalone. I think conservation is probably where... Yeah, conservation allows builders to plant woods. Um, and woods in your territory ha that have been removed, old growth gain appeal, and appeal leads to... Um, that will lead to more culture. And I need a granary here, apparently, because now my city is growing even more. Yeah, see, I only have three here, and now I'm the Suezane of the Oppressed Lav. What quest do all these people want? To recruit a great writer, general... Wow, everyone wants something from me. Arabia. A lot of new civilizations here. What do I actually get from this? Uh, plus two production for in every encampment district when producing units, so this will actually let me pump out military very quickly. Let's see, and that's straight up money. Actually, get. I want to make sure I'm always gaining money because I'm starting to. I've been consistently at around thirty percent. Or 50%. See. I just realized I haven't been studying any sort of military technology either. I that's literally what I while I'll probably actually fall behind. Oh thank goodness. Okay. This is actually perfect. That area there where my uh unit is. 
Oh, okay. Interesting. All right. Hmm. Ваш народ достоин восхищения. Искусство, наука. Чего еще желать? I don't know. What don't I have? I don't have a military, apparently. Actually, speaking of which, what is my world ranking? I'm now leading in culture. Nice. I'm actually leading in everything, apparently. Except for religion. You always, you always have to be careful about religion. He'll sneak up behind you and get you. Can I make another spy? No, I cannot. Awards two randomly chosen free civics when completed must be completed on flat land adjacent to the theater district. That's actually perfect. If there's one thing I will say, I love deserts for... Uh, I love building wonders on the deserts. And I know that's weird to say... But being able to actually build it, uh, build those on deserts just makes my job a whole lot easier because deserts are always barren. You can't really do anything with them. See, like, this, this city's now a production paradise now because I built that one wonder. Speaking of which, why the heck haven't these... Where the heck are my scouts? Yeah, we need to get we need to get rid of that. All right, so make that trader go to Samos so we can actually build a gigantic road. And that's how you heal for a turn. And we can set a city to espionage. So. Oh, it tells me what I can what I can do. Uh, so it looks like can't really do much. Cairo, actually. Yeah, let's send them to Cairo. See if we can steal some technology. Let's send these builders over here. But as you can see, though, like from, we're two friends with the, with the smaller civilizations. We appreciate that re that you recognize this fact. What did I do? Westernizer. We have a similar government. Yeah, so he actually likes me. Moving forces near their city. Uh, well, I'm just exploring. So I could start trading with them. Actually, you know, yeah, there you go. I'll start exploring this a little bit more. Nice, Scientific Academy. Let's make that place the smartest city ever. Remember that politics, colonialism, imperialism, and war also originated in the human brain. Let's see. Nah, I like my government the way it is right now. I've now two more envoys. Probably actually start taking. I don't really need the faith one. I don't. What's the benefit here? Uh, receive a relic every time you discover a new natural wonder and earn fifty percent faith from all relics. 
Yeah, so you do actually want to look at what the be uh, the benefits are for being, uh... Uh, not being the Suzane, but just simply having more than other civilizations. Usually that will mean, though, you are, um... The su uh, suzerain of that, uh... Of that country, of that place. Oh, what's this give me here? Yeah, let's actually get uh, more money from my trading posts here. I don't think this city... I don't think it needs anything else. I can definitely build something here, though. So, like I said, it's always nice. I... I should actually move them here for now. There's no reason that I would... If I tore down that rainforest, there would be no reason for me to do that. So... Irrigation on luxury resources will always get you gold. Which is also really nice, because that just improved uh, the amenities there. Yeah, sure, I'll be friends with Russia. I think that'll be a good benefit. It's honestly expecting this area to uh, expand a little bit faster. And, like, even the other nations... See, that's the thing I, I criticize. Like, it used to be, like, you'd chase after these wonders. Not so much anymore. You don't really chase after them anymore. One thing I do need to do, actually, just in case, I do want to protect my cities. And I don't want to take the chance of any sort of war. And apparently I finally actually just got iron. I have enough iron to make swordsmen after over a thousand, almost 900 years. Hanging gardens. Yeah, I don't need any of this stuff here. Well, I should start making some military units just to protect all my cities, just in case something does go wrong. Uh, let's see here. Place is a paradise for, for uh, advancing. Probably actually should have. I honestly don't like listening to the, uh, the advisors. I think I'm at a point where it's like, oh, okay, I already know what you, uh, what you actually want me to do. Uh, don't need minor victory. Decisive victory. That'll get rid of them. I know we're not going to finish uh, tonight, though. That's one thing uh, I will say. Uh, let's actually also move you over here. And apparently I still don't have a road to Kyoto from, uh, from that city. Actually amazing. See, once I actually get the sewer, I can actually build that in my city square and I'll actually get more housing. Yeah, I remember the early game was you just seeing who can get the wonders first. Yeah, if anything, if, if there's one wonder that's still really, really good to get, it's, um... It's the pyramids, because that gives your builders one more build. I'm building a bunch of scouts to, uh... Oh, I, I need to explore that other continent. I probably should just build the entertainment complexes. Fresh you. And have you explore as well. 
Because it's great, I know there's another huge continent out there, but I'm not seeing any of it. Uh, Pikemen, stuff you fortify. I want an alliance. You would want three of my luxury resources, 20 gold per turn. Nope. I wonder if I could talk him down. Basically, I would take his tourism. Uh, I don't really need diamonds, though. Oh, I have an idea. Give me... It's that gold part that sucks. I don't even need gold. I'm sorry, man. I don't need... It. Yeah, it's it's dumb, but your offer is really unfair. If you got it as Britain... Uh, let's see. If you didn't get the Great Lighthouse and weren't Britain, you could just give up winning the Naval War. That doesn't... Thankfully, that doesn't really exist anymore. Uh, I've noticed in, in terms of military... I find the military aspect, for me at least, to be very easy. Um, just give me a second here. I noticed one thing, I'm not getting any sort of, I'm not getting any musicians. I, that's, that's, it feels like the card is wasted. The bonuses, culture, probably could use a lot more trade routes though. Let's just go with uh, Great Writer. Yeah, I, I honestly don't notice a huge problem with uh, things like uh, the uh, with military. I will say though, like archers to me are overpowered in this game because any range unit, not the siege units, uh, like the specifically the uh, like the crossbowmen. They, since they have a melee strength and a range strength, if you attack them in melee, they will still do damage to any of the melee units. Um, but they also basically get to attack for free. And units to me are a lot sturdier in this game. So you can actually, uh, you know, siege units obviously are much, much better at taking a city, especially later in the game. But most of the time, though, I just found that making a... Um, you know, just taking the time and just absolutely, uh, conquering, or not conquering, uh, doo -doo -doo, what was I thinking, uh, just spam, you know, creating a bunch of archers and, mil and melee units was a much, is currently a much better strategy. I guess I find, oh, I guess they just built, finally finished building a caravel. Uh, let's see here. Hermitage, where can I put that? What does Hermitage do? Must be built along a river. Three art points turn and that. That's not bad. This is not really great on production, but I'll take it. So let's get come that. Actually, move this one here. I normally do focus on a lot of internal trading, uh, mainly because I just want all those roads. I know that's a bad idea, sending a caravel just to explore on its own, but 
I'd rather just have it explore. And of course, you can always remove improvements as well, but I don't know why you wouldn't remove a single improvement in this game. Oh, good. These guys finally got up here. And these guys... What can you do? Oh, I can actually get some milk. Finally! After all these years, my people can enjoy some milk. Much tourism. You know what? That is such a good spot. You know what? Fine, forget it. We'll build right here. Wait, what is the mine? What am I getting? I am getting... What does this city need? Send an archaeologist here to excavate an artifact to provide culture and tourism when brought back to your city. Interesting. Can I build more archaeologists, or is that like a one-time thing? At least you can't stack military anymore. Yeah, you can't stack military anymore. Thank goodness for that. One scout turning into ten warriors and arches was horrible. Well, I think that was Civilization Four where they got rid of that. And yeah, that was much needed. But... One thing to note is that the people who developed this game were the people who developed the expansions like Brave New World and Gods and Kings for Civilization V, so they really focused more turning into a really good uh, single-player board game. They can actually really just enjoy uh, going at your own pace here. Let's actually build a bunch of military units instead. That is what I should do. There's I am I have not cultivated Kyoto at all. It's actually really bad. I wonder all my builders. Did I really use all my builders? I think I did. I do have a lot of gold though, but I want to make sure. Oh great, so now I have a spy here, so now I can actually see a lot more in what they're doing. So what I can actually do, um... So I'll have these four choices here, so... Uh, listening posts increase di diplomatic uh, visibility, spies will operate at uh, two levels. Uh, higher for 24 turns. This is actually usually a good start because uh, I'll just make your spies more efficient Let's See, okay, so we actually have a choice here so we can actually do more writings or we can actually uh, recruit Niccolo Machiavelli or Donatello. Let's uh, let's recruit Donatello. Oh Apparently we actually will actually we'll guess we'll get both great people nice. So, where to go? I guess I could only send them to that university then. Yeah, so you want to make so clearly what I need to start doing is just making more great works. And... Can we send this writer anywhere? We can actually send the writer up there. Oh, he actually made it. 
The city needs a theta square and an archae and an archaeology museum into the city. Thus it is necessary to note. Men must be either enticed or snuffed out. For light offenses they avenge. Grievous ones they cannot. Therefore the offense done to a man must be such as to remove any fear of revenge. Actually, that's that's actually really good. Oh, looks like I'm actually having a lot of trading posts now. Where is let's see, Saint Petersburg? Is there a road there? There is a road there, okay. Athens to I see here if there's any other cities I need to actually make a road towards. You know what? Actually, let's just go and make a trade with uh, Russia. That'll actually improve relations a lot. Actually, I don't know why I did that. That was dumb. I want to actually explore westward. I guess I can only have as many archaeologists as I have uh, museums. I need to just make force all my cities to have museums. Whether I like it or not, whether it's good for me or not, I need to just start doing that. I just always view it as like a waste. Like a waste of production, a waste of resources, but that's my personal problem. I actually like finished building that harbor. Now you can spend all your time building the Colossus. It is necessary for the one who founds a republic and sets laws in it to presuppose all men evil and always ready to put the maliciousness in their soul to use every time they have a chance. Very, very good words. Ooh, a equestrian statue of Gat uh, Gatamelata. Nice. You know what? Actually, this will just make things a whole lot faster for me. That's another thing, just to let you know. Buying units in this game can get very expensive. They are not static. They increase... They 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 get very expensive. Extremely expensive. To a ridiculous degree. That was 540 gold for a... Um, for one. I sent a trade delegation bearing gifts. Yes, thank you. Oof, Judith Slain, Holofernes. Oh, there we go. Theming bonus doubling output when displaying the same type from different artists. Interesting. From different artists. So in other words, more in other words, variety. That's interesting. That's very interesting. Oh, I know these people are just so unhappy. Actually, no, that's not the right thing to build right now. Oh, jumped around for a bit there.
Like I said, I, I know I'd be able to go a lot faster in this game if the builders were automated. And honestly, with the options available, I usually find myself like a green. It's like, okay, go build that instead. Where's my archaeologist? Twelve turns. Can I just buy it? One thousand thirteen gold. My goodness. That's a lot to build that. Uh, we have another trader apparently. The heck is this city? Okay, Heaton? Eh, why not? What time is it anyway? Oh, we've been streaming for a lot longer than I originally intended. Alrighty. There's that one more turn thing going on. I'm actually surprised with how much culture I have. I haven't been... In, well, actually, no, I've been... Actually, I'm way ahead of everyone, aren't I? Yeah, I'm absolutely leading like crazy. A common mistake that people make when trying to design something completely foolproof is to underestimate the ingenuity of complete fools. So... You can also lose uh, some cards because they actually improve. Um, they improve it. So I surfed them, and now I get public works, which imp which is basically combined two of the cards, uh, production value, and builders get extra actions. I always find this to be absolutely, absolutely essential every single time. Fifteen percent production towards industrial and later wonders. That's also very, very valuable. I think once I learn sanitation, I think I'll stop. Oh my god, what's another? Another barbarian encampment. Stop invading my territory. Stupid barbarians. It's gonna be scary once those guys actually become tanks. And yes, they will become. They will. I know it looks like they aren't. Uh, the uh, they aren't aging, but they are. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so now I can actually try and steal some gold, or I can try and steal uh, some military. I'll actually take the chance and try and steal some military. And since this is one, this is two. Oh, apparently it could build a harbor. I don't know why, how it could, but it, it can. Everyone in this city is miserable. I wonder. I can. I'll be more than happy to take that. I don't know what I really want this to be yet. But I think overall we've made some really, really great progress. What's going on here? Oh. It found a village. Good for them. What? Oh. Oh, my scout ran into a village. Okay. Alrighty then. 
Our ideological differences are only the beginning. I can't approve of the way you govern your people. Wow, they really just don't like my government. All right then. Well, I think this section might be. Innovation I think yeah. In the there we go. Two hundred years has done more to save lives and improve health than the sanitation revolution, triggered by the invention of the toilet. Toilets are important. So we'll choose our technology here. Actually, that's the first time I've seen the military advisor. That is the very first time I've seen the military advisor. I like how I actually can. Can I actually go straight to chemistry? I can, and I can pick only anti-cavalry units. That's not exactly ideal. Let's actually... I'm torn here, actually. This is not good. I can actually use all my... I really should actually use all my science and just build... Zimbabwe. Hey, Negative Pro, how you doing? You kind of caught me at the, uh, the tail end of all this, unfortunately. it. You know what? I want to actually upgrade everything, so I actually think I'll go with the, uh... I don't think I'll go with this, then. Just enjoying some civilization was talking about, about the, uh... the Game Awards show. I actually do need to upgrade all our military... our archers here. This is ridiculous. Why I haven't upgraded these archers. Can you just kill him? No, you cannot. That's actually surprising. There. And then we can... Do that. You're enjoying the Hearthstone expansion. I did see that, actually. Uh, that... I actually kind of like it. I was playing it a little bit on my mobile phone. Um... A little bit earlier today. And I do like, actually, uh, what they... I do like what they done. It's, I find it to be kind of, uh, entertaining at least. They, they, Hearthstone's always a good job at doing, making sure it's entertaining, but the reason why I've stopped playing is I can't keep up. I just cannot keep up with, um, with how, with what they actually want. Oh, I have a, ma I have a major, ma I have, ma God, I have a major housing problem everywhere. Like, I, if I, you know, you, if you can't stay relevant, you can't keep with, uh, keep all the cards and such, you just lose. And that's not fun. It's not fun at all. That's why, you know, I like Hearthstone. It does a great job for what it does. But, it doesn't, uh, doesn't really help, uh, you know, if you don't, if you can't put down the money. I, I don't see how anyone can really have a lot of fun with it. Hey, a promotion. Nice. Ah, damn it. Pretty soon another swordsman. The whole palace complex is built along a central axis. The axis of the world. Everything in the four directions suspend from this central point, represented by these palaces. I do like that one. Oh my goodness. Everyone needs housing. Let's actually just get up to six here. What's the benefit? What's the benefit here? Builders, da, da, da. your light and heavy cavalry units have plus five. Ooh, that's actually really good. Yay for another wild card policy slot. Your city receives one culture for each specialty district it constructs. Culture and science per turn. Fourth gold for all trade routes. That actually is really good. That should drastically increase my gold. Yep, doubled my gold. A 
Major defeat, major defeat. That's not good. Pillaging only costs one movement point. Yeah, I need to get that. I need an army. Any quests for trading? No, no quests for trading. That's unfortunate. But I can't have these people hate me forever. Can I even trade with any other city? All right. Yeah. Okay. I'm. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop. We'll finish this another night. Uh, we'll hopefully finish this another night, though. We've made a lot of progress, though. We're still in the lead for the culture of victory, and I think next turn, next chance I get in all of my cities, I'll actually finally build the cultural, uh, the amphitheaters and such, and just start trying to actually get, start mining everything, I guess. Maybe do a little more expansion, though. But, for now, though, thank you very much for watching. Let's actually take a look and see who is available. You know what? Why not? Let's send y'all the flak flag here. I'm surprised actually he's, he's still... He actually just started, so he's actually just doing his uh, Binding of Isaac run. So, if anything though, once again, thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this. Probably, I don't know if we'll continue this tomorrow, but uh, we'll see. I do know I'm not going to be streaming on Saturday. I'm going to be going to the PlayStation Experience um, being held down in Southern California, so I'm going to spend some time and actually check what that's all about. So, once again though, thank you very much for watching, have yourselves a good night, and until then, take care.